To understand what exercise or exercises most effectively train the pectoralis major, or pecs, let's take a look at the biomechanics of this muscle group. The pectoralis has two heads, the clavicular head, which originates on the front of the clavicle or collarbone, and inserts on the upper arm, and the larger sternocostal head, which originates on the sternum and ribs and inserts on the upper arm. The primary action of the pectoralis major is adduction of the humerus, that is, drawing the arm toward the center line of the body. The pectorals enable us to hug something or someone tightly to our body. The clavicular head also flexes the arm, that is, draws the arm toward the clavicle. We perform arm flexion and activate the upper pecs, that is, the clavicular head of the pecs, in push-ups, dips, and bench presses of all types. I want to repeat that. Push-ups, dips, and flat, incline, and decline bench presses all involve arm flexion and all activate the clavicular head of the pecs. In fact, some EMG studies indicate that decline and flat bench presses activate the clavicular head of the pecs more strongly than do incline presses. The pecs also internally rotate the arms. The best exercise for the pecs will involve arm adduction, flexion, and internal rotation. Human anatomy and physiology only makes sense when we consider natural selection. The pectoralis muscles we have today function the way they do because they helped our ancestors survive and reproduce in their natural habitat. We have to think about what our ancestors had to do to survive in order to understand why the pecs work the way they do and how we can best train them. It should go without saying that our ancestors did not have to be good at bench pressing or anything like it in order to thrive in our ancestral environment. Our ancestors did not have to win bench press contests in order to survive and reproduce. But our ancestors did have to do push-ups as a regular part of their daily survival tasks. They slept on the ground and when they got up in the morning they would use their pecs to push themselves up off the ground. If they fell down or had to crawl on the ground for any purpose they would use their pecs to push up or hold themselves up. If they had to climb over a ledge or up a tree the pectoralis would be used to push up. Watch young children playing games outdoors and you will see them perform dozens of push-ups getting up off the ground after falling. Compared to push-ups and dips, bench pressing has a major drawback. That being that when lying on your back with a heavy weight in your hands, your scapulae are not able to move as freely as they would when doing a push-up or dips. This may limit your ability to protract your scapulae under the influence of the pectoralis, limiting the training effect for the pecs. In addition, bench pressing is relatively dangerous. Some people have been severely injured or even died when they dropped the barbell or dumbbell on themselves when unable to control it under fatigue. You can't get trapped under a push-up or a dip. So, of dips and push-ups, which is best for the pecs? 
I believe that the push-up best activates the functions of the pectoralis major, both the sternocostal and the clavicular heads. Unless you do dips the Vince Gironda way, bar dips activate primarily the sol shoulder flexion function of the pectorals and neglect the arm adduction function, that is, drawing the arm toward the sternum. In contrast, push-ups involve both arm flexion and arm adduction. Every time you do a push-up, your arm moves toward both the sternum and the clavicle. At the beginning of a push-up, your body alignment relative to your arms is similar to a decline bench press. When you lower your body, the alignment is more like that of a flat bench press. When you press up, the arm moves towards the collarbone as in an incline press. Therefore, this exercise strongly activates both the sternocostal and clavicular heads of the pectoralis. During push-ups, your arm also moves toward the center line of the body, activating the arm adduction function of the pectoralis. In other words, the push-up combines the actions of incline, flat, and decline bench press all in one exercise. The packs were designed by evolution to perform push-ups. The fulcrum push-up, promoted by classic bodybuilder and coach Vince Gironda, improves on the conventional push-up. In this video, it is performed by Daryl Conant, a long-time student of Gironda. In the fulcrum push-up, you have your feet and hands on three benches all of the same height. From the top, you bend your legs as you ease into the bottom position, which increases the stress on the lower fibers of the pecs compared to a regular push-up. Basically, this exercise combines push-ups with dips. I've improved on the basic fulcrum push-up by doing it on rings, which increases the range of motion of arm adduction, and by using body elastic bands to add resistance. To set this up, you hang the rings so that the place where you will grip is at about the same height off the floor as the top of the bench you will place your feet upon. When you get into the support position, you bring the rings together so that they touch or come close to touching. When you lower yourself into the bottom stretch position, you bend your legs and let the rings come apart. Pause briefly in the stretch position then smoothly press up and simultaneously smoothly draw your hands to the center line while internally rotating the arm. This exercise combines arm flexion, adduction, and internal rotation. It takes the whole pectorals, both the sternocostal and clavicular heads, through a full range of motion. It is impossible to get trapped. It is a complete and very safe pectoral exercise. I have increased the load I use in fulcrum ring push-ups by loading plates on a dowel attached to my brute belt, as I described in a previous video. The link is in the upper right-hand corner. However, I prefer using my body elastic bands to plates to load push-ups, because when you do push-ups, as you press up from the bottom to the top, your leverage improves. This means you can handle more resistance at the top of the motion than at the bottom. Elastic bands increase in resistance as they stretch, so they are ideal for adding resistance to push-ups. When I use bands and rings for these push-ups, the contraction in the pectorals at the top of the motion is very intense, much greater than when I use plates to load push-ups. The fulcrum push-up on rings is my main pectoral exercise in two of three torso training sessions each week. I perform one set of about six or five to seven repetitions using the slow controlled cadence demonstrated in this video. 
Each set takes about 50 to 70 seconds of time under load and I continue each set to concentric failure.